You've got to believe in your abilities. You've got to believe in your service, your company, your ideas, unquestionably. You've got to have faith, and that faith gives you patience. That is not going to happen as quickly as you want it to happen. A lot of things are going to happen that will catch you off guard. And so therefore, you've got to deal with and handle it as it comes. And not only that, but that faith and patience drives you into action. You've got to keep moving and keep plugging away. In the Far East, they have something that's called the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to grow. And when they go through a process of growing it, they have to water and fertilize the ground where it is every day. And it doesn't break through the ground until the fifth year, okay? But once it breaks through the ground, within five weeks, it grows 90 feet tall. Now the question is, does it grow 90 feet tall in five weeks or five years? The answer is obvious. It grows 90 feet tall in five years. Because at any time, had that person stopped watering and nurturing and fertilizing that dream, that bamboo tree would have died in the ground. And I can see people coming out talking to a guy out there watering and fertilizing the ground that's not showing anything. Hey, what you doing? been out here a long time, man. And the conversation in the neighborhood is, you growing a Chinese bamboo tree, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, even Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder can see ain't nothing showing. You know that's how people gonna do you? So how long you been working on this? How long have you been working on your dream? It's good. And you have nothing to show. This is all you got to show? People gonna do that to you. And some people, ladies and gentlemen, they stop because they don't see instant results. It doesn't happen quickly. They stop. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to keep on watering your dream. And when it began to happen, they stop laughing. They said, look, whoa, look, look here. It's, look how, hey, man, you know, I know you could do it. Look here, you got a job here. <laughs> See, see, during those hard times, we didn't know how you're going to make payroll during those times when you fail and, and, and things didn't work out. They were, they were nowhere to be found. But you know what I discovered? When you're working at your dream, somebody said, the heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when, you, when it's hard and there's a struggle, see, what you become in the process is more important than the dream. That's far more important. The kind of person you become, the character that you build, the courage that you develop, the faith that you're manifesting. Oh, it's, it's something that you get up in the morning, you look yourself in the mirror, you're a different kind of person. You walk with a different kind of spirit. People know that you know what life is, that you have embraced life. You knew it was hard, but you did it hard. By the way, let me give you a secret. You're going to laugh at this. Why am I telling you this? You know squirrels can't find 74% of the nuts they hide? Is that a fun fact or what? No, I'm serious. These little fools, they can't find 74% of them. They didn't study on it. Is that crazy? Look it up. I, well, I'll prove it to you. Check this out. Look at it. I, I, I read interesting things. Go to Elmo. This is a breakthrough. This is like a breaking news. This should be on CNN tonight. Now it can be told. All about squirrels and nuts. That's what I read when I'm at home. Now it can be told. And let me tell you, scientists have long thought that gray squirrels, which are far more common to the eastern seaboard than their red cousins, can not only remember where they dug their holes, but also smell the nuts they've buried. But they must not be too good at either skill, since studies show they fail to recover 74% of the nuts they bury. Right there. Why does that matter? Because you've been burying your dreams all your damn life. And guess what? You keep thinking you're waiting for the right time. When winter comes, you go find your little acorns, right? You think you're going to find them? Let me tell you something. You keep burying those dreams, the longer you wait, the harder they are to find. It's time you dig those things out right now and find them and put them right in front of you again and go chase them. Say that you're with me on that. I, Jamie said it earlier and I said it, you absolutely can have it all here. You can have a great family and a great business and a, a great financial situation and feel great about yourself and travel the world and do whatever the heck it is you want, but you need to dig those dreams out right now. I want you to start picturing, what is it that you really want? Why are you really doing that? Really? Is it for any of those people sitting around you? Do you want to make any of them proud of you? Do you want to make prove all of them they were right? Do you want to do wonderful things for your children? Do you want them to, your children to know they can do anything in life because you've done anything in your life? God 
made you and believes in you. He's around you all the time. He wants to bless you. He wants you to do great work for people. The more you carry him with you into your phone calls and your meetings and the interactions with people, the more he'll bless them. There'll be setbacks. There's many people will be mean to you. That's all part of the process. That's part of the jock strap. That's part of the best day of your life, worst day of your life stuff. But let me just tell you something. You can't, you can't get there unless you invite those people with you. Now, are you willing to do the ugly, by the way? Do you know what the ugly is, right? The ugly is doing all the stuff the people who lose aren't willing to do. You got to make those phone calls. You got to see people. You're going to have to put up with some rejection. You got to put yourself in an uncomfortable place. Listen to me. Do it. Put yourself in an uncomfortable place. Don't negotiate it. Don't try to navigate it in your head. Negotiation, you will lose. Okay? Unrealistic people rule the world. Quit trying to be so daggum realistic. Okay? Remember this. Weird, rich, normal, poor. Can you remember that? Say yes. Get a little goofy. Look at Cardone. He's a complete whack job, just so you know. You got to get a little road dog in you. People are looking for leaders. People are looking for you. They don't know it yet, but they're looking for someone who will love in them. Introduce them into people that can change their life. Believe in them. Care about them. Tell them the truth. This company stands for something good. We do what's right for families. You should be proud of it. We do great work every day out there. Changing lives across the kitchen table. Conversations at a Starbucks. A meeting at a convention. A, a conversation across someone's kitchen table that changes lives every single time. It changes lives maybe you heard the story about the the evangelist here in texas way back in the horse and buggy days used to put up his uh tent in you know these various texas towns and hold tent revivals and he put up his tent one of these towns expected a big crowd to come and hear him preach and he got there first night of the tent revival and he walked inside the tent it was empty and he thought something must be wrong he waited till eight o'clock nobody showed up he waited till eight fifteen not a soul finally eight thirty one lone cowboy wandered up on his horse, tied his horse up outside, came in, sat down on the front bench, big empty tent. So the preacher thought, well, at least I better go down and talk to the cowboy. So he goes down and talks to the cowboy and he says, cowboy, I don't know what to tell you. He said, I'm the preacher. And this tent was supposed to be full of people. And he said, something's gone wrong. I really don't know what to do. I'm embarrassed. And he said, I don't know what to do. And the cowboy said, well, you know, I'm not a preacher. I'm just a cowboy, so I can't tell you what to do. But he said, I know this, if I went out to feed my cattle and only one showed up, I'd at least feed it. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> the preacher said, hey, the cowboy is right. If you've got a message to share, if there's one person or a thousand, don't let your ego get in the way. You know, you should do the best you can. So he got kind of inspired by this conversation with the cowboy, jumped up on the platform, started preaching as if the tent was full of people. And he was so inspired, he just kept going, kept going, went for an hour, went for an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half. Finally, wound down and quit. Come down off the platform, talked to the cowboy again, said, well, cowboy, what did you think of my sermon? <clears throat> the cowboy said, well, I'm not a preacher, so I can't really tell, I'm just a cowboy. But he said, I know this, if I went out to feed my cattle and only one showed up, I'd feed it, but I wouldn't dump the whole load on it. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> if it seems like we're dumping the whole load here today, I guess we really are, but you guys are working hard. Does anybody have four pages of notes? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. My job, I'm getting it done. Wonderful. We should give a prize one of these days for the most notes. Fantastic. I congratulate you. You're working as hard as I am. I appreciate that. Okay, we got some more work to do, so let's go to work. Everybody's okay? Say, I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. I'd love to take you with me as my traveling audience. Wow. We've covered the first two abilities in the personal development quest. One is the ability to absorb, don't miss anything, pay attention, good watchword for the 90s, pay attention, things are moving so fast these days, you gotta pay attention, pick it up, soak up the colors, soak up the sounds, soak up what's going on. Second, respond, let life touch you, let the emotions affect you as well as the sights. Now here's the third ability, develop the ability to reflect. Reflect means go back over, study it again. Go back over these notes that you're taking today. Go back through the cassettes one more time. Read the text one more time. But there's more to it than that. Go back over your day. I call it run the tapes again. 
so that the day locks in firmly. Here's some good times to reflect. One, at the end of the day. Take a few minutes at the end of the day. Go back over the day. Who'd you see and what'd they say and what happened? How'd you feel? What went on? So that you capture that day. A day is a piece of the mosaic of your life. Number one, don't treat it casual. Number two, get from the day. And then number three, go back over the day so that it locks in that experience, the knowledge, the sights, the sounds, the panorama, the color motion picture of the day. Just lock it in so that it will serve you for the future. Having that day, not missing. Next, take a few hours at the end of the week. Call time to reflect. Go back over your day timer. Go back over your calendar. Go back over your appointment book. Where did you go and who did you see and how did it feel and what went on? Capture that week. A week is a pretty good chunk of time. Next, take half a day at the end of the month. Call time to reflect and do the same thing again. Go back over what you read. Go back over what you heard. Go back over what you saw. Go back over the feelings to capture it so that it serves you. Next, take a weekend at the end of the year to establish this year now firmly in your consciousness firmly in your experience bank so that you've got it so that it never disappears good ability to acquire the ability to reflect go back over remember 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 it's so valuable to be able to remember the thought remember the idea remember the experience remember the occasion remember the day remember the weather remember the emotion remember the complexity remember the highs remember the lows so valuable at the end of the day Lock that day in. Lock the month in. Lock the week in. Lock the year in. Well, listen, on the way to accomplishing your dreams and visions, there's going to be a lot of challenges. There's going to be a lot of setbacks. It's not going to be easy. And discipline is a huge part of it. But more important than discipline is your faith. You, you are a religious country. If you do not hold on to your faith, whatever it is, you cannot make it. You can't. I'm sorry. You, I don't care what your faith is. Without your faith, without your faith in God, along with the discipline, you will never make it. You cannot get to the top without faith. If you get to the top without faith, it's temporary. It will not last. You have to stay focused. Because listen to me, it's really, really hard to be successful. Let me tell you this. Look at me. It's really, really hard to be successful. But I want to tell you something else. It's really, really hard not to be successful. I've been both. See, you see me today, but you didn't see me in school when I had a severe stuttering problem. I couldn't talk without a stutter. And I, 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 I flunked out of school. You're looking at a man who was homeless. I lived in a car for three years. Me, you see all of these TV shows and suits and Hollywood. But I lived in a car for three years. I made a lot of mistakes. You have got to be really, really focused because challenges are going to happen all throughout your life. You're going to be told no over and over and over again. You're going to have people in your family who will not believe what you tell them. I'm going to be a TV star. No, you're not. No, no, you cannot. You, you cannot be a TV star. No one in this family is a TV star. No one in this neighborhood is a TV star. No one in this school is a TV star. And you stutter. And you black. So what? You, you now you're going. Whoa! I'm not. I cannot stop being black. So this is, this is with me. So my focus and my faith, my belief in God, He has kept me through all. All of my dark moments when I was living in that car for three years God he kept me he kept me understanding that I, he was just testing me that I had to pass all my tests that's what happens to a lot of old people see they stop passing the test they, they thought that because something happened to them negative along the way that it wasn't meant to be that's not true it was just a test you got to keep passing the test you dig it's not gonna it's not, life is never going to be just oh you, you just can't you know silly you can't just <laughs> oh happy oh happy happy no something gonna happen somebody you love gonna die something you want to happen won't happen Something you attempt to do, you're going to fail at it. This is life. This is all the time. So the dream that you have has to be bigger than all your problems. My dream was so big, it was bigger than all my problems. So when I was homeless, my dream was bigger. When they told me no, my dream was bigger. 
When they said you were black, we would not hire black people here. My dream was bigger. What? Bigger. My dream was bigger than all my problems. And my faith in God, what? What they going to do? What? What? When you have God, you have everything. You have everything. That's serious business. That's the business. I want to give you a quote from Ralph J. Corner, who said this at a leadership conference when he was chairman of the board of General Electric. He said, we need from every person who aspires to leadership a determination to undertake a personal program of self-development. Nobody is going to order a person to develop. Whether a person lags behind or moves ahead in his specialty is a matter of his own personal application. This is something that takes time, work, and sacrifice. Nobody can do it for you. Now that, my friends, is good advice. Start living that advice. People who reach the top rungs in business, engineering, selling, law, real estate, medical care, people who reach the top rungs in any pursuit, get there by following conscientiously and continually a plan for self-development and growth. That's exactly what these tapes are about. Now, any plan for success has to have three components. The first is the what component. You've got to know what it is you're trying to do. The second is the how component. How do you go about accomplishing your goal? And the third component is the payoff, results. In this plan for success that you're developing now, the what component is built on the attitudes and techniques of successful people. How do they manage themselves? How do they overcome obstacles? How do successful people earn the respect of others? Now, the how of this plan for self-development and growth is a series of concrete guides for action like the one you've just heard for developing self-belief. You'll be hearing more of these. Let me emphasize that these guides work. They've been proven countless of times by thousands of people. I urge you to try them and see for yourself. This leads to the third component, results. Let me tell you what results you can expect and I assure you that conscientious application of this plan will achieve them. Your personal training program for success will bring you greater respect from your friends and family. It'll bring you the admiration of your business associates, greater status, increased income, and a higher standard of living. Think of this plan as an experiment, and you're the scientist in charge. You already have a fully equipped laboratory in which to work and study. That laboratory is all around you. It consists of the people in your life, the people you see on the street, the people you work with, the people you live with, and of course, yourself. This laboratory is rent-free, and there is no limit to the amount of time you can spend in it, nor to what you can learn from it. So, as the director of this laboratory, you'll want to conduct some observations and experiments. I want to give you an experiment to start with right now. To conduct this experiment, pick the two people you know that you feel are the most successful. If you want to, jot their names down in the booklet. And then pick the two most unsuccessful people that you know. And as you follow this plan for self development and success. Come back to this set of names and observe how the principles and ideas that you'll be hearing apply to these people. Anytime you run across an attribute or a practice that pertains to successful people, recall the names you've picked and see who it best applies to. And do the same for the unsuccessful attributes that you'll be hearing. For example, self-belief is the important attribute of successful people that David Schwartz has described. Which of the people you've picked does it apply to? If your experiment bears out the results of others who've conducted it, you'll notice that successful people adhere to the techniques and methods of positive big thinking, while unsuccessful people display the attributes of self-defeat and mediocrity. Now, one of the first attributes I think you'll consistently notice among unsuccessful people is a disease that is one of the biggest enemies of success. I call this disease excusitis. Here's what excusitis sounds like. I don't know if I can do this job. I mean, this is, this is really out of my league. I'm not a genius, you know. Well, I'd like to take on more of the work that would really be important to me, but I, I really don't see where I have the time to do it. I'm really rushed now just to finish the work that I already have. I can't imagine 
how I would find more hours in the day to finish more work. You know what they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and believe me, this old dog is just too far along to start anything new at this point. Look, with my health the way it is, I just do what I can to get by. I'm not about to press my luck and give myself a heart attack. Sounds pretty awful, doesn't it? And if you looked at the lives, ambitions, and accomplishments of these people, I can tell you what you'd find. Not much. A lot of mediocrity. In case after case, case, excusitis is the difference between the person who is going places and the person who is going nowhere. When we allow our dreams to pull us, they unleash a creative force that can overpower everything in our way. To unleash this power, though, your dreams must be well-defined. A fuzzy future has little pull power. Well-defined dreams are not fuzzy. 
wishes are fuzzy. To really achieve your dreams, to really have your future plans pull you, your dreams must be vivid. If you've ever hiked a 14,000 foot peak in the Rocky Mountains, one thought has surely come to mind. How did the settlers of this country do it? How did they get from the East Coast to the West Coast? By foot. Carrying one day's supply of food and water is hard enough. Can you imagine hauling all of your worldly goods with you? Mile after mile, day after day, month after month? These people had dreams, big ones. They had ambition. They didn't focus on the hardship of getting up the mountain. In their minds, they were already on the other side. Their bodies just hadn't gotten them there yet. Despite all of their pains and struggles, births and deaths along the way, those who made it to the other side had a single vision, to reach the land of continuous sunshine and extraordinary wealth, to start over where anything was possible, where everything was possible. Their dreams were stronger than the obstacles in their way. You've got to be a dreamer. You've got to see the future finished in advance. You've got to see California while you're climbing 14,000 foot peaks. You've got to see the finish line while you're running the race. You've got to hear the cheers when you're in the middle of a monster project. And you've got to be willing to put yourself through the paces of doing the uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. Because that's how you realize your dreams. Our great country was founded with dreams. They've always been important. Dreams are what caused thousands of people to leave their homes and families and start over in a land where anything was possible. To this day, dreams continue to bring people to our land of opportunity, to a country where you can start with little and end up with a lot, to America. Don't you sometimes wonder why so many immigrants who come to America can build a new life and a fortune while many of the people who were born here are barely surviving? They have a dream, a defined goal, ambition. Aside from the pioneers that crossed the prairies and the mountains to reach their vision of hope and future promises, there are other amazing examples of how ambition has shaped America. Take Ben Franklin, for instance. When most people think of Ben Franklin, they remember the kite and the lightning bolt and the discovery of electricity. What a lot of people may not know is that Ben Franklin was one of the first writers to address self-making. When Franklin started Poor Richard's Almanac in 1732, he used the blank spaces between the crop data and the weather information to insert clever bits of moral and practical advice. I'm sure you've heard the saying, fish and company start to stink in three days. Well, that was one of hundreds of Ben Franklin's comments on life. Another was, diligence is the mother of good luck. You know, it's amazing how hardworking, smart working people have all the luck. We sometimes hear of a brand new musical group, an overnight success. They must have been in the right place at the right time, knew the right people, had a friend to help them out. Everybody in your life will have a turn back moment. No matter who you are, you're going to have such a period in your life where it seems like it's not working. You're going to have doubts, you're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations and challenges, and everybody has what's called a turn back moment. You always have a moment in your life where the direction you're going, you will have to make a decision to keep going or you turn back. The sad thing is the average person turns back. But think about this, if you're going somewhere and you turn back, you can never get there. If you wake up every day and go get in your car and say, I'm going to the store, and halfway to the store, you turn around, and then the next day, you go to the store and you turn around, you do realize that you will never get to the store. So whatever you needed from the store, now is even a greater need because you turn back. And every time you turn back, it does not change the need. So what kept me from going was, what kept me going was, I, re I created, I made turning back, giving up, never an option. And I had really dark moments, man, where I thought I was going. I just didn't think I was going to make it. I, I mean, where I am today, I didn't see it clearly at all. I had a lot of turn back moments. But you know what it was for me, man? Being successful is so hard, but I realized that not being successful was hard too. 
the difference between not being successful hard and trying to get successful in hard, if you're trying to get successful in this hard, at least there's some payout. There's a payoff. If you hang in there, there's payoff. When you're not successful, it's hard. It's hard not having money. It's hard never knowing how to come up with your mortgage and your and your bond and your rent and your let. It's, it's hard not knowing that. Why, how you gonna feed your children? How you gonna pay your bills? It's hard, ain't it? So if it's hard that way, and it's hard being successful, I might as well deal with how hard it is to be successful because at least one day, that could be a payout. If, if you just stay in the hard part of life of not being successful, ain't no payoff. There's no result for being poor. It's just mo po. You just po some mo. There's no payout. Just make the decision that you're not gonna be poor anymore. You, you have the right, don't matter how you were born. I, will, I was born very poor. My father made $5 a day, five US dollars a day. We had five children. Stop coming up with excuses. Don't give yourself permission to continue to live a small life. You can't fit a big dream into a small life. Give yourself permission to go for it, to test yourself, to challenge yourself, to live full. I like the saying, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. The reason you're here is because there's something in you that says, I can do more. This just can't be it. There's something in you. There's a calling on your life. There's something in your heart that costs you to get dressed and, and spend the money to go to seminar after seminar and listen to message after message and speaker after speaker. Because there's something in you that tells you this is not it for you. You have not peaked here. There's more in you that you are expressing. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind. What's in store for you if you challenge yourself, if you persist and persevere, if you take ownership for your life. George Bernard Shaw said the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they create them. Create what you want. You have the power in you to do the more than you can ever begin to imagine, to control your destiny, to make a difference in our children, to make a difference on the planet, to make an impact. Let us say together, it's me. And let us say together, it's hard. Say it like you know it, say it's hard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard. The people who have seen their retirements taken away from them, by the corporations that they work for. They were within two or three years of retiring and they had it taken from them. The number one entrepreneurs in this country now are senior citizens, the number one employer, number two, McDonald's and Walmart. And there's nothing wrong with those jobs. I guarantee you those people did not have a plan to end up living their lives at the end of life with those types of jobs. And they didn't have a plan like you have, and while you're investing in yourself, not to. Action, you see, feeds and strengthens confidence. Inaction, on the other hand, in all of its many forms, feeds fear. I've heard it from actors, newscasters, professional athletes, even paratroopers. It's the waiting. It's the anticipation of a big event. That's the hard part. Once the action starts, nervousness and fear dissipate. But the longer the action is postponed, the greater the tension and fear become. So, if you're dreading making a certain phone call, make it and the dread will disappear. If you are afraid of confronting a problem with your superior, don't put it off. That will only increase your anxiety. Discuss it, act on it, and discover how those worries are conquered. Make this a resolution. Build your confidence and destroy your fear through positive action. Someone once said that the most difficult problem in life is getting out of a warm bed into a cold room. That's a difficulty a lot of people face. The longer you lie there thinking how unpleasant it will be to get up, the more difficult getting up becomes.
comes. This is another case where a quick injection of action is needed. Writers often talk about writer's block, the inability to get started. But the writer who waits for inspiration to come will probably be waiting for a very long time, may never even get a word on paper. Salesmen have frequently noticed that the hardest call to make is the first one of the day, the one that gets them started. But until the salesman takes the plunge, he or she is not a salesman at all. They're just a person thinking about being a salesman. But listen, here's a writer with an idea about getting started. When I've got deadlines to meet, I simply can't wait for the spirit to move me. So I use what's called a mind force technique. I make myself sit down at my desk, then I just pick up a pencil or a pen or whatever, and I just go through the mechanical motions of writing. Sometimes I just doodle, sometimes I just, you know, the idea is just to get my fingers and arms in motion. If there's a particular subject uh, I'm writing on, I'll start writing anything at all that I can think of about that subject. Pretty soon, without being conscious of the transition, my mind gets on the right track and I just go from there. People who get things done in this world don't wait for the spirit to move them. They move the spirit. Try these two exercises and see for yourself. First, use this mechanical starting method to accomplish simple but unpleasant business or household chores. Rather than thinking about the task, just jump right in and start doing it without any deliberation. Washing dishes, for example, or filing those papers at work. Don't even let yourself think about it. Just start doing it. That's the most effective way to handle these chores. Second, once you've done a few chores this way, use the mechanical method to create ideas, map out plans, solve problems, and do other work that requires top mental performance. One good way to get going on big projects is with a very inexpensive investment, a pencil and paper. With these two tools, you can tie your mind to a problem. When you write a thought on paper, your full attention is automatically focused on that thought. That's because the mind is not designed to think one thought and write another at the same time. And when you write on paper, you write on your mind, too. Tests prove conclusively that you remember something much longer and much more exactly when you write it down on paper. In addition, once you master this pencil and paper technique for concentration, you can think in noisy and distracting situations. When you want to think, just start writing or doodling or diagramming. It's an excellent way to move your spirit. But when you get in your head, what does that really mean? It means you're believing the most limiting thoughts. And you have to remember, we all have a two million year old brain. And it's not designed to make you happy, it's designed to make you survive. So it's always looking for what's wrong. Remember we played the game, look for brown, and you all saw beige shit and called it brown just to feel successful? I said, look for red, you saw burgundy, you called it red, so you could get more scores. Whatever you're looking for, seek and ye shall what? Fine, says that in a very good book called The Good Book. And you don't have to be religious to understand this, but this is a fact of life. So if you and I are going to really take things to a different level, we got to see what could mess it up. So the mind could mess it up, but what aspect of the mind? What, what makes us start to believe those thoughts? What's the emotion that messes us up? What is it? It's absolutely fear. But there's more than this. Every day of our lives, we live in a world that is incredibly complex. It is no more stressful than World War II when none of us in this room probably remember that time, but it looked like democracy was disappearing and the Germans were going to win at one stage. That's stressful. Being in a foxhole is stressful. You're not making as much money as you want or being a little overweight or someone calling you names online. That shit is not stressful. We're making it stressful. We've lost perspective. Who's with me on this? Say I. So what's really useful, I think, today is for us to figure out what messes us up. And one of the biggest things that messes us up is expectation, right? What did we say the other day? Trade your expectations for appreciation and your whole life changes. Because when you're expecting things and it doesn't happen, you get upset. So that first day also was all about what if you lived your life and you made a decision? And the decision was life is too short to suffer. It's too short to be stressed, pissed off, fearful, worried. Who's with me on this thing? But our minds, our survival software, is always looking for its wrong. Our job is to create the happiness. And the only way you do that is you draw a line in the sand and say, I'm not going to suffer. I'm going to be honest. If I start to feel that stress, I'm going to breathe, and I'm going to realize we're the only creatures on the planet that can think a thought and become angry. Think a thought and become playful. Think a thought and be worried. Think a thought and feel loved. That's, we can change. That's why we can change how fast. 
but you have to take control and train this brain. If you don't train this brain, it'll use you instead of you using it. You have to identify with your heart or your soul or your spirit instead of the brain. As I said, in China, the heart is the emperor. It is the highest energy. It's the thing that is worshipped because when you were born, there was no brain. Your heart started beating and there wasn't a brain in you as a female.